logic models inside the black box of prevention. This is the black box approach to prevention. We see a problem, we suggest an intervention, and then hopefully we can measure whether it improves the situation. There are several difficulties with this approach, especially when the problem and the solution are complex. Can we explain why our intervention works in one situation, but not in another? Which parts are essential and which are not? A logic model looks inside the black box to ask how changes happen. Why use a logic model? To ensure that what you do is realistically linked to the outcomes you are trying to achieve. To think clearly about assumptions and expectations. To explain your logic to others, for example a potential funder. To ensure important changes are measured. To understand not just overall impact, but whether changes happened in the way you thought they would. To create a logic model, you work backwards. First question, what is the problem? This generally involves thinking about behaviour and long-term outcomes. For example, young people are putting their health at risk by binge drinking. Then ask, what factors affect it? The immediate causes. For example, one factor might be boredom and a lack of alternative activities. Then, how can these be altered? For example, by providing after-school clubs. Finally, what resources are needed to make this happen? Back to the first step, defining the phenomenon. You might ask, what are the national data and trends? How does this compare to local data? And which groups are most at risk? This stage justifies the need for any intervention at all. Then a look at the research. What are known to be the risk and protective factors? Not all of these will be things you can change, of course. This stage leads to a better understanding of the problem. Risk and protective factors might be about the people and places surrounding a young person, their family and community, or internal factors, their knowledge, opinions and abilities. How can these things be changed? Again, this involves a combination of looking at the evidence base and local knowledge. This stage identifies practical actions. Families, schools and the community all affect young people and prevention has been shown to work in all of these settings. Finally, what resources are needed? In other words, is what you want to do possible? Is it sensible given the wider context? Another thing to think about is the assumptions you are making. For example, after school clubs will be popular with all young people, including those most at risk. The young people we are working with have the academic ability to benefit from all activities in this programme. We need to know whether these assumptions are realistic. The evaluation can be planned alongside the intervention. The inputs needed will be measured at the planning stage. The outputs to be measured could include delivery of sessions, for example. The immediate impacts could include attitudes to drugs. Measuring both before and afterwards is important. It's also important to measure the behavioural outcomes you want to change both before and afterwards. Ideally, you'd also do a longer term follow up to see if the effects have lasted. In some cases, you'd also be able to measure longer term public health outcomes if the intervention takes place on a large scale. A bit more detail on measuring outcomes. As mentioned, measuring both before and after is important. It might not be immediately obvious how to measure outcomes for self-esteem, for example, but there are well-established ways of doing this. Is it possible to have a control group? The evaluation will be more convincing if you can. Do you want to know whether the intervention affects boys and girls in the same way? If your theory of change does not fit easily into a logic model, there's no need to be constrained to a linear diagram. For example, a program may work both with parents and children, who then interact. The type of diagram on the next slide is often called a theory of change rather than a logic model, but the principle is the same. 
the inputs are sessions for parents and children. And the expected outcomes are delayed onset of drinking and a reduction in binge drinking. This diagram opens up questions. Making expectations explicit allows the process of change to be untangled. Do parents' attitudes towards alcohol actually change following the sessions? Can parents restrict young people's access to alcohol? Or do they have easy access elsewhere? If young people drink less, is it mainly because the sessions have improved their social skills? Or is it mainly about their expectations of alcohol? Or is the work with parents actually more important? Finally, it is important to remember that finding out what didn't work is as important as finding out what did. This slide lists some resources that may be useful.